We're ready, Fess. Hi, this is Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. I'm a physical therapist, a craniosacral therapist, and a Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. And we're here live, still in Provincetown. We're at the hotel today. You can see the weather is nothing like it was yesterday. And we are getting ready to throw that bike on the car and drive back to lovely Western Massachusetts because it is just uh, gray and misty, about to rain any minute, and pretty darn cold. I have to thank, uh, I believe her name was Terry New, whose husband made this uh, fleece for me with a corgi and the name of my business because it is really warm and I need it here. So today I wanted to talk briefly about some things I saw yesterday with some of the dogs here. Um, I saw kind of a biggish dog, like a pit bull, bull terrier mix wearing a pretty wide collar, maybe a two inch collar, but just pulling, pulling, pulling his person down the street as hard as he could. And clearly he'd been doing this for many years. His whole front end was overdeveloped and his hind end was underdeveloped and he was towing out behind. And he was a perfect example of a dog that needs a different situation for his collar slash harness. And I did not stop the guy. It was really crowded and busy in town. I had to talk to him about it. The dog seemed to be middle-aged, but boy, that is one way to get some ACL surgery bills coming to you, is to have your dog pulling like that, even in a collar or a, a incorrect harness. So I can't emphasize enough to you, if you see a dog, or if your own dog is wearing a collar or a harness and he's still continuing to pull, you need to make some changes. It'll save you probably $5,000 for two ACL surgeries, if nothing else. Many dogs will receive herniated discs in their back um, from pulling. They end up with um, dysplasia in their elbows. They have a lot of problems from pulling. So it's really important to make sure that your dog is not pulling on the leash. And it's something that a lot of people struggle with. But there are so many easy solutions. I highly recommend a freedom harness for a dog that's pulling. Even an ill-fitting freedom harness, like for that dog, he's a bit of a hard fit. Um, the way his shoulder was. Um, but even that, a freedom harness impinging his shoulder would be so much healthier for him than what he was wearing. Um, I, similarly, I saw a small dog, maybe Tristan's size, wearing a harness, um, very elderly, could not keep up with the owner. And the owner was like literally lifting up the front legs of the dog and dragging him down the street because they were shopping and chatting with their friends. And they just didn't understand what they were doing to their dog. And he just looked so perplexed and helpless trying to keep up with his person and he couldn't walk that fast. And honestly, if you have a dog like that, just leave him home when you're shopping. He's not having fun. You're not having fun. That would leave you another arm for carrying bags. Um, and again, you can observe this in your own dog. If your own dog is not happily trotting next to you on his collar or his harness, then you need to address that situation. It can be really, uh, you know, seriously hazardous for their health to not take care of them when they're on their leash with you. So this poor little old guy, I mean, you know, clearly he's been walked like that for a long time. And maybe it was the person's daughter or, you know, maybe it belongs to someone else and they're not familiar with walking the dog. I mean, there's a million reasons why people do things that they're unaware of. But again, this was the exact opposite of the pulling dog. This poor little guy could hardly keep up, maybe beagle sized And um, the person, one of the worst things you can do for your dog when you're walking is to lift the front or back legs off the ground, either the dog or you, because then they are literally not grounded. And a grounded dog is a reactive dog and a defensive dog. So it's really important to make sure that your dog is well balanced when he's walking because physical balance leads to emotional balance. And that's what we want in our dogs. We want them to be happy. We want them to have a good time walking with us and we want to have a good time with them. So when you are not walking your dog in this terrible weather today, uh, think about what you are using to walk your dog and whether he's having a fun experience. I saw someone using a gentle leader on a dog, not that I love them, but the dog was a golden retriever, happy, healthy, wagging his tail, walking along with a nice symmetrical gait, lots of uh, symmetry in the tail wag in his gait, and he looked completely happy in the gentle leader. Not that I would ever recommend them, but he's not pulling on it, he's not getting away, his person was paying attention to him. So in that case, you know, I'm not gonna wanna change that. They have a good situation going there, and uh, the dog's happy and the owner's happy and they're paying attention to each other. So it doesn't matter what you're using, just as long as it's working properly. So that's our up-to-date harness report for today. 
We are going to get in the car and drive back to Western Massachusetts. Conversations with a Corgi will not be on again till Thursday because Tuesday and Wednesday I'll be at my work as an educator. So we will be back on Thursday and we'll continue talking about wraps for people. I want to show you some of the wraps we use on extremities because they are some of the most useful wraps we have for people, uh, for riders, dog walkers, people with shoulder injuries. So we are still here in Provincetown today in this lovely gray weather. Thanks for joining us and we will see you in two days when we get home. Everyone have a good time with your dog today and try to remember to take a look at how your dog is feeling when you're walking him. It's so important for the experience to be good for both of you, even if you're just going out for a, a quick business break. All right, this is Sally Morgan for Conversations with a Corgi. We'll see you on Thursday.